if our ellipse has a major axis that is horizontal, meaning the, long, the longer of the two axes is horizontal, that means that the value of a, because remember a is greater than b, always a is greater than b, that means that the value of a is going to be uh, in the denominator of our x quantity that's being squared. And then our smaller value will be under the quantity of y being squared. If it has a vertical major axis, meaning your vertical axis is longer than your horizontal axis, then that means the value of a, again, which is larger, is going to be under our y quantity. Um, the h and k in this case refer to the center. So the center is at h comma k. Um, a squared is just the distance from the center to the major axis vertex squared. And then b squared is just the distance from the center to the minor axis vertex being squared. Uh, ellipses are always equal to 1. And we call this equation the standard form for an ellipse. In this example, we want to find the vertices and foci of this given uh, ellipse equation and then try and graph this ellipse by hand. So because this has a larger value under the x squared, that means that our major axis is going to be parallel to the x axis. Um, the center of this, the center of this is at the origin at 0, 0. Because you can imagine this as being x minus 0 quantity squared divided by 25 plus y minus 0 quantity squared divided by 4 equals 1. Right, so that's going to put our center at 0, 0. Um, so let's look at some of the values that we know and then use that to try and graph. So what is a? Remember, a is always the larger of these two values. So this right here, 25, this is just a squared. So that if a squared is 25, that means a is 5. Um, b is just the value uh, the square root of this value here, because this is b squared. So b is 2. And we need to find c. So if you recall, there was this relationship between a, b, and c. It was a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared, because a is the longest value. So we know a and b, so we want to try and get those together and solve for c. So we can subtract b squared from both sides. And we get that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So we know that a squared is 25, b squared is 4. So it's 25 minus 4 is equal to c squared, which means that c is equal to, so 25 minus 4, that's 21. So c is the square root of 21. Uh, that's not a perfect square, but it'll have to do. So we have the values of a, b, and c. Now we can try and graph these. Um, so we have our center at the origin, center here at the origin. Uh, the distance from the center to the major axis vertex is 5. That's what A is. And we know that the major axis is going to be along the x-axis. So we can go 5 units to the right, go 5 units to the left, those mark our vertices. So the vertices have ordered pairs of negative 5 comma 0 and 5 comma 0. Remember that when the book is asking us to find the vertices, they really are only asking us for the vertices on the major axis. Um, they don't really care about the vertices on the minor axis, what we sometimes call the covertices. Uh, the ordered pairs of those, though, are going to be 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. Because again, this distance is b, and we know that b is 2. Um, our foci are going to be the square root of 21 units away from the origin. So rad 21 to the right of 0. So these are our foci. Uh, so moving horizontally, that's moving in the x direction. So that's going to be negative square root of 21 comma 0. So that's this direction. The square root of 21, that's in between 4 and 5. So it's somewhere over here. And then the other one is just going to be the same distance from the uh, origin, but to the right. So positive square root of 21 comma 0. 
So those are our two foci, and then we have our vertices. And now we get to try and sketch this by hand. So I might be just as bad at sketching uh, ellipses by hand as I am circles, so bear with me here. Um, and you get this sort of oval shape, and that is an ellipse. So this is our ellipse right here that has its center at the origin. It has its major axis along the x-axis, and then looks somewhat like this. Now, I just want to remind you that the foci will always lie on the major axis, and so they're always going to be on the longer axis side. 